Oh, we look so few tonight. <laughs> Remember I told you this morning, the empty benches, don't con them. Just imagine they are full. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, I was thinking of uh, of Hebrews chapter twelve. Um, <coughs> Hebrews chapter twelve. It's an old, it's an old scripture. But um, <clears throat> when I was coming to the States in 1974, at that time, we fly from Grenada to Barbados by a little airplane named Liat. And uh, you are allowed 40 pounds. Um, if you had more than 40 pounds, you have to pay overweight. And I had so many things coming to America. No, once I get on American airline from, from Barbados to the States, I could have 72 pounds. But uh, boy, I couldn't, I, I didn't, how am I going to carry all the stuff I wanted to carry? So I decided I'm going to get a big handbag and I'm going to put all the heavy things in the handbag, my carry-on. So my handbag was heavier than my checkout luggage. And uh, when I got on the airplane, I tried to squeeze it under the seat, and it wouldn't fit. It was heavy. And so the, the attendant came, and she said, um, you can't have that there, and it's blocking the exit. So she took it and she kept it for me. But she said, that thing is heavy. So anyway, um, I didn't know all that I had to, you know, I didn't know where to go, what to do. I just knew I was following people around, that's all. When I got to the States, go through immigration, and then get my luggage and check out again. It was my first time traveling to a big country, and uh, I wanted to be sure I didn't miss my flights. But when I got to St. Louis, which was my destination, I still thought, well, there was some, I, I thought I had to go through immigration again. I thought I had to, you know, so here I was, uh, running up those steps, and there were a big crowd of people around me, and they, they, it was roped off, and I was running up the steps, and I heard somebody say, Johnny, you made it! And it was Sister Book, and she was there with Brother and Sister Sloman, and I said, is that it? Is that the end of it? And she, did, she said yes, and she reached and she took my heavy bag. And uh, it reminded me of the scripture in chapter 12 of Hebrews. It says, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. There are many, many thoughts came to me, and I just want, to, want you to follow me, follow along with me a little bit, see if you can think about what I'm thinking. You remembered when Christ died and he rose from the dead, the scripture tells us that the saints who were dead 
people saw them walking in the streets of Jerusalem. Isn't that thrilling? The grave was not made for saints. The grave was not made for us. People saw with their own eyes that these dead saints were walking in the streets of Jerusalem. Wow, I don't know how it makes you feel. Then I wondered what became of them? Did they go back in the grave? Did they go to their families and died again? We don't know. We don't know. Okay, so hold on to that. Where did these people go? And I don't think they went back to the grave, no. Then, when Jesus ascended into heaven, The scripture tells us that a great cloud received him out of their sight. A great cloud received him out of their sight. And Hebrews here telling us we are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. You can add one to three and draw your own conclusion. Folks, they are gone on before us. They are calling us out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Run the race with patience. It won't be too long again. It won't be too long again. And I like the part where the scripture tells us, and that's in Acts chapter 1. It says, as he went up, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said... Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. I love that. This same Jesus, not a fake one, not an idol. Not somebody that will come and say, I am Jesus. No, he said, this same Jesus that you see going up into heaven, he will come again and receive you unto himself. He's not sending an angel. He's not sending an ambassador. He's not sending anybody else, but this great father is coming back to receive his children unto himself, that where he is, we will be. He wouldn't put us in an orphanage. He wouldn't put us in a homeless shelter. He is going to be with us and we will be with him for eternity. Isn't the, that's a wonderful promise. That's really wonderful. So when I read that uh, this great cloud of witnesses, now I'm not telling you to believe what I'm telling you, but this is my interpretation. I am thinking that when Jesus went up, all these people who came up from the grave went up in that big cloud. And that big cloud, that's the witnesses here telling us to hold on, come on. You could take it for what it's worth. That's how I interpret it. They are there and they are pulling for us. They are pulling for us and saying, you have gone too far to turn back now. Hold on, the time is short. 
Let loose of the things that are holding you here in this life. Let loose of every weight, it says, every weight. And uh, maybe we do not want to acknowledge it, but we have things here in this life that might be weighting us down. Things that should we be on our deathbed might still come to our remembrance. Oh, I don't want to leave that grandbaby. And that's the first thing I could think of because, you know, some parents prefer the grandbaby than the daughter or the son. That grandbaby is the most important person. Don't tell me, I don't have a grandbaby, but I know. And you lie on your deathbed, oh, I really wanted to see my grandbaby grow, grow up and go to college and get married and have a job. Folks, that's a weight that's holding you to this life. So when you get to the end of the road, it seems as though you cannot put that aside. It says, lay aside every weight. But as, you, as I say, you could take it for what it's worth. That's how I am interpreting it. And it says, also lay aside the sin which doth so easily beset us, the besetting sin. The sin that will cause you to sin. And that's talking about the carnal nature. We have to be sanctified to make it to heaven. And the, the scripture tells us he suffered without the gates that he might sanctify the people. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's sanctification. So we have to lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily, easily beset us. The devil can cause us to sin and he can show his head anytime. But it says, looking unto Jesus. As we go forward, looking unto Jesus. We are marching to Zion. We are marching to Zion. Our standard bearer is in front there with the flag of righteousness and we have to look unto him and follow him. We are marching to Zion, the author, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Folks, these are precious, precious promises. We have to hold on to them. We have to be so encouraged in reading God's word. And I won't read all of this, but I just wanted to um, just lift out a few verses. It says, wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, not the religion, but holiness of heart, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby may be defiled. Those are such great promises. Folks, we are living right now on a battlefield. 
we are living on a battlefield. And the Lord wants us to fight for what is right. Uh, it's a battle that only the Christians will win. It's a battle we are going to win, but we still have to fight. We cannot give up. The scripture tells us, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And what do we fight against? We fight daily against the flesh. The spirit and the flesh can't agree. We fight against principalities, against powers, against the spirit rulers of darkness in high places. That's what we're fighting against. And we cannot give up the fight at this last moment. That's why that great cloud of witnesses are there telling us to hold on. So when we kneel in prayer, we can just picture out that great cloud of witnesses. Have you ever imagined that? I can see that big area there in St. Louis, and I can see all the people there in the crowd looking for relatives and friends. Can you imagine what it's like on the balcony of heaven? How many relatives and friends you have looking out for you? And I told Sister Buck on her deathbed, I said, I want to tell you something. And I know I was going to cry. And she said, what? I said, you remember when you met me in St. Louis? You remember you said, Johnny, you made it? I said, I could just hear you welcoming me to heaven, saying, Joni, you made it. She said, I sure will. And I could see my mother, and uh, I pictured her one time, or had a vision of her carrying my little baby sister and my little baby brother. I had a picture of her, and I could just see her. And I could see Sister Rich and Left, and I could see Brother Nems, and I could see all the saints that I knew years ago. I could see them and hear them rejoicing. We've made it. My feet have touched that show. Folks, that's what we live for. And that's what we die for. And as uh, we studied in the lesson, Esther said, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to stand with the people of God. I'm going to stand with the people of God. Today, it's sad that many people who one time professed holiness, they have become critical. But I want to stand with the people of God. And my problem is not them being critical. There are things that uh, probably I don't uh, agree. Um, we don't all agree. We don't see things alike. But uh, it is not what you do, but it is your attitude toward it. They express their feelings with hate. They, they are very hateful, and they have the wrong attitude. But uh, God wants us to have a, a pure heart. He wants us to be able to disagree in the right manner. But when we disagree and we, we, it turns to be hatred, we're not going to make any headway. I am so thankful for the way of holiness and knowing that you don't know my background. I came from Catholic. I went to Pentecostal. I went to Berean. I went to almost everyone. I heard the word from everyone. I had an Adventist aunt. I had a Jehovah Witness aunt. I mean, I, I knew all about them. But you know what? 
I did not choose him, he chose me. He died for me, I owe it all to him. And I am so thankful for him today. Time is short, the moments are passing by. The devil is busy. And uh, he's going to speak to us, whether we think we are weak, whether we think we're strong, it's his business. If you're going to vote for this candidate, he wouldn't come to you and ask him to vote for him. He knows that he's gonna get your vote. The devil is not going to get my vote, so he's after me. He's after me. So we have to be careful with how we walk and how we talk. He said, the scripture tells us, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, the world know how to um, get back at people. They know what to tell them. They know how to tell them as we say, off. We Christians know how to tell the devil off. We call on the name of Jesus. And the scripture tells you, he trembles. The devil trembles at the name of Jesus. Just everything that goes wrong. You're on the highway and you're getting a flat tire and you see it's going down and down and down and you call upon Jesus. And some way, somehow he provides help or he sends help or he causes that tire to hold up a little bit until you could get to help. That's the God I serve. He says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Christians, we are not on a picnic daily. We are on the battlefield for the Lord. It's not a picnic. Picnic will come later. You gotta make it into the rapture. That's where we're gonna have big marriage supper of the lamb. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. The scripture did not give us promises that we are going to be perfect all through life and we wouldn't have problems. He didn't tell us that. But you know what? We serve a God who is going to keep us afloat. We're not going to sink. We are not going to go under. We sing that song, we're not going, going to go under. Um, how does it go again? Um, don't worry of the thunder because we're not going to go under. And uh, that's what God has promised us. While the earth is sinking and people are running to and fro and undecided, they don't know what to do next in life, we are going to stay afloat because God is on our side and we have those witnesses. Just, just think of that, just think of the witnesses. People, I, I go to Independence and I just like to drive through that cemetery. Seems as though every time I go to Independence, I have to make a drive through that cemetery to look out for, for the graves. And I know Sister Rich and Sister Leff and Brother August Leff and Sister Goins, they all fought together. And I think Sister Johnson might, might be close by, but what I'm telling you, they're not there in the grave. They're not there. They're somewhere and they're saying, Joan, hold on, hold on. It could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. Don't give up at the last moment. Don't give up. That's what the devil wants us to do. So seeing that we are surrounded, compassed about, and it says a great, great cloud of witnesses, and that's telling me I don't think anybody could number them 
Nobody could number them, and they pull in for us. Let us cast everything behind us so we can be free to run the race that the Lord has set for us to run. And let us do it with patience. Let us do it with patience. We don't have to push anybody else out of the way to run that race because we are all going to make it to the finish line. The prize is not who came first, second, third. We all are going to come first. We all are going to come first and we all are going to receive a prize. The scripture tells us to look up. Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And as we listen probably to what the results of the election might be, maybe it might be something that, uh, with which we might not be happy. It's not what we wanted. But folks, our business here in these few days we are doing for eternity, not for this life. Elections will come every two years, every four years. We are doing business for eternity. Let us look up for our redemption, draweth nigh. Now, I have this little poem. I had it with me, and I don't, I'm not sure whether I read it here before or not, because um, some, of my, <laughs> some of my notes I know I've used other places. But I still like it, and, and it's, what then? Have I read it here before? What then? When the great busy plants of our cities shall have turned out their last finished work, when our merchants have sold their last order and dismissed every hardworking clerk, when our banks have all counted the last of their notes and paid out their last dividend. When the judge of the earth wants a hearing and asks for a balance, what then? When the choir has sung its last anthem and the preacher has voiced his last prayer, when the people have heard their last sermon and the sound has died out on the air, when the Bible lies closed in the pulpit and the pews are all empty of men, when we stand each one facing his record and the great book is opened, what then? When the actors have played their last drama and the mimic has made his last fun, when the movie has flashed its last picture and the billboard displayed its last run, when the crowds seeking pleasure have vanished and gone out into the darkness again, when the trumpet of ages has sounded and we stand up before him, what then? Folks, let us pray for our children, our grandchildren, our friends, our church families, the only glue that can hold us together in these last days is pray. Let us pray that we are not disappointed on the last moment. Let us hold on. We don't want to give up. Let us be sure we know in our heart the answer to what then. Amen.